Hello and welcome to another video on our channel. So this is the part three of the macOS application tutorial. I hope you have checked out the first two videos in this series. We have set up some of our Swift UI views and our models. And in this video, we'll combine our Swift UI views into a final product. So stay tuned. And after that, we'll just make our filter type struct to confirm to the case, iterable and identifiable protocols, which will make it possible for us to use the filter type structure as a data in a for each initialization. So we'll add those up here. So after adding case iterable, we'll just add a new variable here. which is all cases. So this function will adopt the case iterable protocol and will provide a list of all the possible cases. Next, we'll just add the identifiable protocol. and a new ID for this so that it conforms to the identifiable protocol. So our filter type struct is complete. Now back to our filter view. So back to our filter view, I'll just add a picker that uses the binding instance of the filter type for a selection and the filter type names for the menu choices. So for that, I'll just create a binding variable of filter type here and inside our edge stack I'll just make a new picker and I'll just add a spacer between the picker and the toggle And here I'll just add the missing argument, which is filter. And I'll set a constant value here for all cases. Great. Okay, so this has been set up. Now back to our landmark list .swift file. I'll just add a new binding variable here of the same filter type. And as with the filter view, this will allow sharing with the parent view. In the preview provider as well, I'll add the filter constraint and set this to all cases. And let's update the logic here to include the category filtering. So after this, I'll just add an AND condition So we've added a few more if conditions here to limit the row creation. And next, let's combine the list and the filter views. So for that, let's create a new Swift UI view in our project. And we'll just call this navigation primary. And inside this, let's declare the filter state. So after adding the filter parameter here, we we'll just bind this property to both the filter and the list views in the next few steps. Now let's add the filter view and bind this to the filter state. So in the body, we'll get rid of this and create a vertical stack with the filter view. And 
and let's resume our preview window. So as you might notice, the preview fails to build this because our filter view actually depends on the user data object in its environment. So we'll need to fix this in the next steps. And let's add the user data in here. So while the navigation primary struct doesn't need the user data directly, it has a sub view that does. And to enable the preview, we provide the user data as an environment object to the navigation's primary view. And then let's add the binding to the selected landmark. And we can add the missing arguments here for the selected landmark. Okay, so let's add the landmark list inside of our vertical stack. And we'll add a list style modifier to this and set its value to sidebar list style. And let's preview this. Okay, so this looks good. And we'll just add another modifier to our vertical stack. To set the minimum width and maximum width. Right, this looks good. So that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe so that you can follow the series throughout and create your own macOS application. And I will be dropping the part four of this tutorial series very, very soon. So stay tuned for that and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.